feel good. Thanks, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have much to say either, like Anthony. Um, most folks know me, but I guess for the sake of external voters, <laughs> for our constituents, I guess, <laughs> um, just to kind of share a little bit of my background, my story, how I got to this space and place. Um, and so I went in um, at 17, caught like damn it, 24 years. Uh, back in the late 90s. So uh, that's how I forayed into the system um, for the fact is that, you know, my dad died, there wasn't nobody. Uh, opened my doors. Only things that you had outside were squad cars, gang units on the corner, you know, men with badges and firearms. You know, mm -hmm. they invest in that. I had a bed waiting for me. Uh, many beds actually got bounced on all over the prison system. But um, nevertheless, got, to, got a chance to come out because folks, you know, including folks from YJC were working on legislation and got SB 260 through, gave me a chance at board. Um, and even though like I made it out through that cut, uh, the fact that I wasn't born here, man, I didn't get to go home that day that I was supposed to go home. You know, what they say is parole and release of folks. Uh, got to watch people go home instead. You know, and it's, I sat in a different tank where uh, somebody came in, a contractor, you know, put a chain around me and take me to a nice van. You know, so that's a different journey. Um, but to kind of, just to kind of really emphasize like how I got into YJC was really because of that, um, that experience around crime-based deportations, crime immigration, all that. Um, you know, when I finally got a chance to get out, like my first free day in the world, I guess you could say as an adult in the free world was with a deportation order in one hand, with a ICE supervision paper in the other hand, and in my bag was a, an envelope. <laughs> Report to your parole officer within 24 hours. You know, like that's my first breath as an adult in what they call the free world, right? So uh, it's just an experience um, that kind of put me, in a, put me in a crazy place, you know, um, having to come out like that. Um, but at the end of the day, um, Went, went down to, at the end of the day, I ended up getting uh, out for a little bit, but then only to go back in um, by like four months later, not even four months, you know, ICE came back and uh, took me in. And so from there, I ended up having to fight for my own liberation again, um, went through the courts, used all that legal knowledge that I taught myself on how to navigate that system um, and being make it out, you know, using the federal court system. Um, but through that, I ended up getting a chance to, to come out on bond, um, having to fight for a bond hearing on my own. And then, you know, I didn't have a single penny to pay for that. Right. And so it was folks from the hood that came through. It was a homie of mine that came home as a lifer that paid half of it up front. You know, I got on the phone and he said, Hey man, how much you get? He's like, man, I'll cover half of it right now. Get that for you. And I was like, love from the hood. Um, but anyways, when I got out, um, after that bond, it was right after Trump got elected. Um, and if y'all can imagine a mass panic inside, that's the same type of fear that I saw outside. The folks that I used to see, the Lotera or whatever that was out and about doing stuff, didn't see them anymore. The parents that were taking their kids to the library weren't seeing them anymore. Like that was real, right? Um, but so from there, I ended up getting involved with ICE out of LA because I was also trying to find my own deportation. I knew I couldn't do it on my own. And so that's how I got involved with YJC. It was actually uh, Gloria <laughs> that pulled me in to YJC. Um, and so that's how I got involved. And ultimately at the end of the day, went to a lot of places, asked for help. Folks said, man, we can't help you. You got a record. Or folks that look at me sideways. Folks are really disparaging. You know, and these are other orgs that are supposed to be helping people too. Um, so that was an experience that also kind of shaped my view on the world shaped my view on a lot of things. In some cases, I was told to wear a suit and tie for multiple years before they would help me. You know, I didn't have that kind of time. I had a deportation order in my hand. I said, in it here and now. But because of the young folks at YJC, they showed me so much love, showed me a lot of care, willingness to support. Uh, because of that, I was able to like just be supported and able to get a pardon from Governor Brown in record time when his own staffers told me, you ain't been out 10 years yet, good luck. And so with that, um, 
just want to get on the board to reciprocate that back to the young folks to make sure that love is returned.